I'm back after some technical difficulties. Unfortunately, my background isn't here, but at least I'm here. Um, I did have Caitlin and Jeremy Eden on. Unfortunately, my phone overheated. It wasn't even a question of battery anymore. It was a question of, uh, of overheating. Wow. So uh, we, got, we got Big O back. We got Caitlin back. We got the request back. Let's see if we can get some, a couple more questions in with these guys. And uh, we are waiting for Caitlin. And Eden to join. Perhaps uh, she can join us here and we can continue our interview here. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. I'm glad we're all back. What I love getting to see in, the, in my first viewing of the movie were all the things that I didn't catch when we were filming the movie, all like the side comments that like people were making or things that were shot when I wasn't there. I would, you know, when I was out picking up Henry or, you know, anything that happened in the basement when I'm not there. So like, you know, we didn't get to watch those things happen because we were mm -hmm. like trying to like live as true to the day as possible. Um, yeah. So that was interesting sort of seeing those puzzle pieces all fit with what I already knew because I participated in, but then getting to see all of those other things was uh really enjoyable on my first watch yeah yeah it's a, i would i would say it's a layered layered movie you have to watch it multiple times because a lot of jokes will just go over your head certainly um and i tried to like sometimes i'll stereo pan certain jokes because everybody had their own individual lobs so maybe at certain times in your right ear if you have a really high like quality sound system and you're wearing you'll hear like liam to your right, you know? Sure. Uh, like, fun stuff like that. Uh, Ryan of uh, Fire Tank Frank is pointing out uh, um, Greg's thing about holding the ice in his hands. <laughs> How he yeah. Wanted to pop that in. And... Yeah. Where he <laughs> literally carries it and puts it into the uh, glass, um, as no any normal person would do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of the reasons for that, if I remember, was to prevent the noise of the ice machine from hitting the glass for some <laughs> so I like practical yeah. reason to do it but it was also such a stupid thing for somebody to do to oh, carry God. across the room in a handful um yeah not very so sound conscious yeah that's funny though um what i was i guess uh this is a good segue as you mentioned her being a teacher and then spoiler she's not a teacher by the end of the movie what do you think the future holds for your characters, Chelsea and Greg, like in the next five, 10, 15 years? Uh, well, Chelsea and Greg are rock solid. Um, and that was a, a request of mine when we made the movie. I wanted, I did not want, I was like, if, if, if she's going to have her ex-boyfriend there this whole time, I don't want to be portrayed as the chump who's like, you know, she's doing something behind his back or like he doesn't know that the marriage isn't really going to last. Like, right. it was very important to me that they are a, a very strong couple before and after this intervention. Mm -hmm. Whatever, uh, literally whatever uh, Chelsea is doing, Greg is there to support her. I don't know if uh, if, if Greg's expansion is, is working, um, particularly in this uh, economy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, people really aren't spending money on like funeral cakes. Well, you know, people aren't really having very many funerals because they're not really gathering. No, actually, like they are having a lot of funerals. Well, that's that's true. Yeah. There's a lot more deaths, but unfortunately, not many gatherings. So, unfortunately, right. the cakes, the gatherings have come uh, back. I that's... cannot I cannot profit from the cakes. Yes. <laughs> very good. We got a taste of the characters there, and uh, Katie Cat Pennington's in the back there. I hope you know that. So it's a little mini reunion here as well. Say hey, Katie. Hi. <laughs> Um, so uh, I guess that's all the questions I had for you guys. Is there any, like, when you watch it the first time around after uh, premiering on, on Prime and you rented it, was there anything you caught, um, anything, um, anything like uh, that went over your head the first time that you caught and uh, that you appreciate more now? Um well, again, it's like I'm remembering stuff from we saw, you know, an early cut. Uh, I don't even remember about how about a year ago. Yeah, it was last yeah. last January, and we there, did a, a screening here at our house. Um, and uh, and crew. I remember getting. I I, I honestly, because it was so long ago, and we only got to watch it that one time. I don't remember how much of it changed from that cut to this cut, but I remember feeling like, 
oh, this is a lot different. So there's just, and again, I was confined to the kitchen the whole day. And, you know, like, so there is a lot of stuff. Yeah. That I had no idea what was going on anywhere outside of my earshot, right. you know? So like it, the whole, that's why I said it was like a lot to take in the movie. Cause I'm just like, I don't know most yeah. of the this is all I, new to us. I wasn't even yeah. a part of these conversations. That was another thing too. I remember requesting was just like, I was the driving force of the last movie we made. I don't want to affect the plot in any way for this movie. <laughs> a secondary like side character almost. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are both in the next movie. Should we talk a little bit about that? We probably should because I keep looking at my stupid goatee right now. <laughs> and and the this. hair. The hair is stupid all of too. This. His hair All is that fine. It's I don't for know. a role. It's yeah. it's uh, for the role in the the next. Uh, and we're doing kind of a, a kind of a pseudo. I wouldn't say a sequel to an intervention, but it's in the same universe as an intervention. Um, my character, the documentarian, is reprised, and we're covering a different subject. It's uh, it's cooking. It's uh, like best in show, but it's a cooking competition, and uh, you're both in it. Uh, do you want to describe your roles a little bit? Uh, well, I am a, uh, a, let's call me a preliminary judge uh, for this competition. Um, I'm, I'm a very strange character. <laughs> um, and that's all I feel I should, uh, I should say. <laughs> about sure. That I have, at least. Mm -hmm. Caitlin? Uh, and, no, I'm not going to give any spoilers. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to let... I'm gonna um, let but Russ, I will say that uh, Jeremy and I have a very different relationship. Yes, in, in this movie in compared this movie to compared to an intervention. An intervention. Yeah, and I I do enjoy I I do enjoy uh, remembering the times in which we filmed this movie. It was 2013. I had not yet switched my eyeliner from my lower lids to my <laughs> upper lids, and that's. The thing that that bugs me about watching myself in that movie um <laughs> and jerry and i had only um begun dating yeah uh we'd only been together uh uh not, not even, even a year not even a year it was we, about 10 months yeah we've been together mm -hmm. when we filmed that and now we've been married for over five years now yes All right um, um we got a couple of questions, or we got one statement from uh, Ryan, who plays Fire Tank Frank. He says that was a real roast that was cooked in the film. That's right. And then uh, Suze, I see Suze checked in. Hey, Suze. Uh, she says, uh, was basil the real secret ingredient? Jer, maybe you want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why everyone keeps thinking that basil is the secret. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, maybe there was a little bit of basil in there, but it, it's it's you, as a secret. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't <laughs> secrets like a magician in the kitchen. <laughs> so, Greg, are you? I'm gonna have to ask again. Are you really a recovering sex addict? Um, I don't think the recovery is going so well. Well, I oh, jeez. I, I, no, we got the scoop here. No complaints. Let's, let's just say I haven't completed all the steps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the next, the sequel is going to be about Greg, actually, uh, an intervention too. <laughs> that wouldn't that be wild? Okay. That's I just like, whoa. Can anyone tolerate that voice for the entire movie? I mean, <laughs> deep or more minutes of of, of just this nasally uh, voice and and this this. Well, I you mean, worked with it. You worked with it, didn't you? That's true. And you know what? I, as I'm saying that, I'm like, that actually sounds mean because I very much am doing a blatant impression of a man that I used to work with. Uh, I, I won't say his name, but I worked with him at the hotel. Real nice dude. I loved the guy. Uh, uh, and, and my impression of him and the character of Greg was uh, in tribute to him. In fact, uh, in listening to this uh, or watching the movie, um, there's a line in there that I completely forgot about, which was 100% a Bradley. Oh God, I said his name. Uh, <laughs> oh, Sorry, that's okay. Bradley. Bradley. I mean, nobody's gonna know. But anyway, uh, and I liked the guy. It was like, you know, like I said, he just had but, a nasally voice. That's all. Yeah, but no, as I'm saying it, I'm like, I, I didn't. I actually really enjoyed talking to him when I worked with him. So he was like my favorite guy to work with when I worked at the hotel. 
But uh, the line that I say, um, and I believe I probably said it throughout the whole day to everybody is, uh, how are your travels or should we not discuss it? <laughs> he used to say that to everybody as he was checking them into the, in the front desk, he would like, that was his, his go-to line for everybody and everybody got a kick out of it. And I 100% stole it from him. And I, I think I may have told him, I, I, I even stole your line. Your too. line. I was, uh, I was wondering about that. Cause that's like, it's a really weird thing to say to somebody when you first, they first come to visit, how are, how were your travels or should we not discuss it? Hmm. Yeah. Right, but I, but it like but appropriate for a man who's working at the front desk at a hotel. Sometimes people are just like, I don't want to talk about my travels, and sometimes like, people are like, Yeah, I'm having a great time. I'm on vacation, you know. Yeah. So, sure, sure. Like, uh, like an M. Gustav from Grand Budapest Hotel. Like hospitality is in your blood. Is is it in Greg's blood? Would you say hospitality? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I see. Um, if I, I see Electric it. Freak, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. If not for a moment, then uh, the whole thing. Thanks for joining us on Intervention Live. We got some people zipping in. We got people zipping out. I am here with Jeremy M. Eden and Caitlin Eden, stars of An Intervention. It is now on Amazon, and it's going to hit up Prime on Friday. We would love it if you watched it and wrote a review for us on Amazon and IMDb. <laughs> Sorry, I got I to gotta plug this. Plug, 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 baby. As you so, can. here's a plug for you. Plug. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's really bad. Okay, moving on. Um, yeah, you guys have had kids since making the movie. You've had two kids. Hey, you know, spoilers. Uh, and the dog, the dog in the movie was preparation for kids. Did you guys do something like that in real life? Uh, no, no. I mean, at one point we did have three cats, which you know it could be a handful, but it's it's nothing. Sure. Compared, you no, know, so only. If if anybody's wondering out there, owning a pet does in no way prepare you for have child. Yeah, no. <laughs> if you find that the responsibility of a pet is too much, you should not have a kid. If you're saying, I think it was a really dumb idea to get a dog, like, I don't know. What? If it's too much. It's, like, it's totally different things. Yeah. But, yeah. I... I think, um, hi, Jen Jen, thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to say one of my favorite lines is, I think it was just flat out, I think it was a really dumb idea to get a dog. And it's in the first two minutes of the movie. Yeah. And it just shows yeah. how yeah. maybe impulsive your character might be. And, and I love a good flawed main character. And I think that's a good flaw to have for a main character, someone who's very uh, impulsive, someone who's compulsive, maybe both, you know? But would you say that is accurate about your character? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, by the, by the end of the movie, you know, spoilers, she's, uh, you know, switched her entire profession, like, that's right, a teacher, which, like, you have to put a lot of years into becoming a teacher to get qualified, and now she's going to spend more years to become certified to be, like, a addictions counselor, so, like, yeah, like that impulsivity, but like I do feel like that's Chelsea, that is more of Chelsea's niche, um, like to help people one on one as opposed to try to like make the classroom. Of yeah, that's a good point. You know, that's the movie. It's it's the classroom. It's all these like these yeah. kids, these children uh, gathered around, and uh, you're just trying to wrangle them together. So and I yeah. do I do fail to manage them in like. <laughs> <laughs> like Henry runs away and like I have to go back and like, bring him back to the flock but it's kind of I kind of question too like yeah like would Chelsea be good at even that career profession because like that is a pretty impulsive move because the time frame of the catch-up is you know I don't remember just a few months yeah, yeah. So, if that sure that's a, pretty, a pretty big move to just to suddenly decide to make yeah but you know that's uh, that's part of the arc, and 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 Henry helps her achieve that. Uh, you know, by the end of the movie, by yeah. just uh, allowing her to help him. You know, it's a lot of like help me help you kind of in the movie. Like, and I was asked in an interview, do the characters have uh, do they do things to put each other down, or do they do things to benefit themselves? And like the motivations, they they vary character to character. But yeah, I would say as far as you guys go, totally straight from the heart like 
no no malicious intent whatsoever, right? Well, yeah. Pure and genuine and selfless. And I think, mm -hmm. in my opinion, everybody in the movie is acting with a certain amount of selflessness, and it's mm -hmm. just sure. clouded with selfish uh, reasoning for reasoning, selfish reasoning to be selfless, kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like everybody has half their heart in the right place, regardless of their own flaws. That's what I would mm -hmm. say about everybody who's there at the intervention. Well said, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, uh, I guess I'll, we'll wrap it up with one more question. Do you think if the characters got together again under a new crisis, they would handle it perhaps a little more smoothly? If I guess sequel and i'm not putting it out there a sequel at all but if there was do you think they or do they would just fall back in their old habits i think it would depend on the crisis at hand hmm. and and what they're doing to deal with the crisis because half of this movie is that uh chelsea has orchestrated this whole thing herself so this is her really the driving force behind all this chaos is like she invited all of it into the house in the first place. So if it was dealing with something that was an outside force that they couldn't, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm with Caitlin. It would really depend on um, the specific circumstances and, and what they're doing to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I think that they both have good heads on their shoulders. Um, so with that in mind, I think they would probably end up falling right back into their same same. Way. I did. I just want to see them together again, whether it's them just on a picnic or just like a real crisis at hand. It just, I would love to see them together. What we'll but. do in some movie, like 10 years from now or something like that, <laughs> some like, it'll be like the Duke brothers in coming to America, just some random cameo. <laughs> like, why are they there all of a sudden? It'll be like Chelsea and Greg just show up for like one line and then it's like off and then. We we both still have our uh, costumes. I do. Right? <laughs> I do. Wow. Years wow. Rid of my Chelsea blouse. In fact, I, I saved the the sweaters. Well, just the one sweater. I have the the brown and the green sweater for that yeah. very reason. Or maybe I do have the other one too. Anyway, I saved it for um for that reason. In I was like, this yeah. is same reason. Wow. Stupid bowling shirt from I Hate Theater. Like I have that same. <laughs> like, if this well, now we have to make sequels to all of our projects. We got the wardrobe. We've got the work. Uh -huh. Well, um, it was great talking to you guys. Uh, do you have anything, uh, any closing thoughts you want to say about the movie, about uh, anything at all? Oh, you mean an intervention, which is going to be on Prime uh, this Friday? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it was the, uh, the, the, uh, the most unique filming experience we've ever had, and uh, including with the new movie, which is in a similar... Um, you know, it's also improvised, as you've said before, and it's also like a, a mock documentary. But um, the shooting is is very different this time around. It's not being done in like one day real time. It's, you know, it's broken yeah. several days and uh, several little pieces. So it's almost shot more like a real movie. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's, it was just a very interesting experience that I, I still have really fond memories of and the final product of it. Uh, turned out really great with a lot of heart and I hope people will watch it and enjoy it and again please review it on Amazon because those are important to the algorithms uh, <laughs> and uh, you know to support indie film as well uh, yeah. hashtag support indie film and yeah. that's all I have <sighs> did I say too much? no no, no. You, you, you said just enough uh, yeah I echo all of Jerry's sentiments and um, it was a really fun project to work on. I myself am a huge Christopher Guest fan. Um, my my favorite movie of all time is Waiting for Guffman. Um, and so if I feel as a true Christopher Guest fan, I feel that if you enjoy those types of works, you will very much enjoy an intervention. Um, it's the hour and 40 minute runtime flies by for me. Um, yeah, a lot of lots of laughs, lots of heart. Um, would appreciate people watching and reviewing it. And uh, if you like it, then uh, tell your friends. It's gonna be on Prime. So, like, who doesn't have Prime in 2021? Like, Some just, people, but... just watch it. If you don't have Prime, hey. 
get prime or like get your friend's prime password and log on and then watch it through there or your account. parents prime whoever's your parents prime, prime you need to get a trial do what you gotta do but like I mean, figure it out it's 2021 or you could like you could still pay to rent it for like the next three dollars day or like, so if you want sure sure uh pg <laughs> man parsifal thank you so much for the kind words thank you for watching the movie it's very sweet of you thank you um and thank you guys, Jeremy M. Eden and Caitlin Eden, for being on. I don't have it with me, my background, but you'll have to picture it. An intervention live. Hi, Katie, back there. Um, thank Thanks. you so much, guys. Um, I will see you guys, I mean, sooner, but I'll see you at the watch party on Amazon on January 22nd. And tell everybody, you know, I don't think we'll exceed the 100 max, but if we do... And it's like standing room only, so to speak. I'll so be it. I'll tell you what. If we get 50, 50 people, okay. I'll do it in character the whole time. Well, here's the thing. You, you, have to, you can only do chat, so you can only chat in character. Oh, oh that's right. There's no, there's yeah, no. unfortunately. Here's what, I w here's what would be cool, Jer, and I was going to ask the cast to do this. If they wanted to shoot video on their ends, uh, like during the evening and then give the video to me i could do something with that and that would be fun so yeah, might be able to do is uh you might be able to get uh i'll discuss this with you after but maybe a discord <laughs> okay discord. hey a discord. anything can happen on intervention <laughs> live a so allow a chat function uh, a live chat audio Take yeah well, thank you guys. Thanks again. Uh, thank every thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'm gonna post this video on the, the gram on the book. So if you didn't watch live, that's okay. Hey, maybe you're watching live now, uh, a day later too. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, thank you guys. Goodbye. I'll see you next week on hopefully not another technically disastrous episode of an intervention live. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.